good morning children in this class i am discussing light chapter day 2 for class 10 in the previous class we have discussed about reflection of light in a plane mirror now the reflection of light from spherical surfaces spherical mirrors what are spherical mirrors a spherical mirror is a part of hollow sphere in which one side is painted and the other is polished as you observe from the figure now just imagine now this is a part of a sphere just imagine like a football or a cricket ball a piece is piece has been cut out and one side is painted and other side is polished so it will become spherical mirror spherical mirrors are two types mainly convex mirror and concave mirror what is the difference between a convex mirror and a concave mirror in a concave mirror the reflecting surface is hollow or like a cave concave as we say in a convex mirror the reflecting surface is bulged from the center in center it is bulged so that is convex if reflecting surface is hollow then it is concave reflecting surface one side is reflecting other side is painted we imagine so that means light passes through it just see in the second figure here also so this is representing what i am showing that is representing concave mirror then the mirror which is used in vehicles as a rear view mirror that is the convex mirror so rear view mirrors are always convex second figure also representing one convex mirror just it is very easy to understand if you take a spoon in spoon the hollow surface which you are using for sipping that hollow surface is concave reverse surface is convex so what is convex and what is concave you need to be clear reflecting surface if it is hollow at the center it is concave if it is bulged at the center it is convex a spherical mirror is a part of hollow sphere in which one side is painted and the other is polished then there are definitions related to spherical mirrors we shall go on discussing what are the various definitions related to spherical mirrors they are center of curvature radius of curvature pole principal axis focus and the focal length center of curvature is a center of sphere in which mirror is a part as i have told you mirror is a part of sphere if you imagine a whole sphere and it will have center center of that sphere itself is the center of curvature of the mirror the center of curvature is represented here in the figure the radius of curvature then it is a radius of sphere in which mirror is a part just understand these two definitions there is a sphere mirror has been made from the part of the sphere so center of sphere is center of curvature radius of sphere is radius of curvature then what is pole it is the center of spherical mirror spherical mirror will have an aperture from where the reflection takes place center of that aperture is called as pole principal axis principal axis is the imaginary line passing through center of curvature and pole if an imaginary line is passing through the center of curvature and pole that is called principal axis then how to define focus for a concave mirror light rays which are incident on the mirror will get reflected back so that parallel light rays they meet at a point on the principal axis so for a concave mirror it is a point on principal axis where all parallel light rays coming from distant object they meet after reflection after reflection the parallel light rays they will meet actually in a concave mirror but if it is a case of a convex mirror there 
Life rays they do not meet. They appear to meet. So for a convex mirror, we will change the definition. It is a point on principal axis from where all the parallel light rays coming from distant object appear to diverge. That is for convex mirror. But for a concave mirror, where the light rays are meeting actually. So a concave mirror can produce real images. So that is the focus definition. Then focal length is the distance between the pole and focus. Always focal length of a mirror is half of the radius of curvature. Our radius of curvature is double the focal length. So these are the major definitions we need to know in spherical mirrors. Next thing is we are about to obtain images in spherical mirrors. To obtain images in a spherical mirror, what are the rules to be followed? So there are three major rules which are to be followed and those three rules if you remember then you can draw image in any spherical mirror. So both the spherical mirrors have been shown side by side in all three figures. So go through. Rule 1 says a ray of light parallel to principal axis before reflection passes through focus after reflection. Observe in the first figure a ray of light parallel to principal axis passes through focus after reflection. But if it is a convex mirror, a ray of light parallel to principal axis will appear to pass through focus or will appear to come from focus. So rule remains same. Then for second case, second rule is a ray of light passing through focus becomes parallel to principal axis after reflection. These two are the reverse case of each other. If a light ray is passing through focus before incident on the mirror, then it will become parallel to principal axis. Just observe these two. They are the reverses. The path of light is reversible. That also you can understand. If it is passing through focus, become parallel. If it is going parallel, become passing through focus. Then in for a convex mirror, here also a light a ray of light which is appearing to pass through focus appearing to pass through focus before reflection then it will become parallel after reflection that is rule 2 a ray passing through center of curvature is reflected back in the same path that is rule 3 so rule 3 says if any light ray is passing through center of curvature then it will be reflected back in the same path for a convex mirror if it is appearing to pass through center of curvature, it will appear to come back to the same path. So these three rules are useful for drawing images or finding the nature of images in spherical mirrors. So how to draw nature of image, so how to draw images and how to predict their nature that can be discussed in the next class.